Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. We're glad to have you all joining us, even though right now I'm alone. I know that will change as, as time goes by, and I know uh, a number of you will be watching this a little later, but that's great. We're just glad you're taking the time. Uh, I do realize there's a big glare coming off my glasses today. I hope that's all right. Uh, just in case you're dying to see the eyes. There they are. Now we can get on. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I've got a big lesson for you tonight. Uh, it's not going to be a, as short as some of them have been. It won't be an hour either. But um, I want to tell you what led to this talk tonight. Uh, like everybody else just about, I know that everybody seems to be watching the news with with the stuff going on uh, with Russia and the Ukraine. Uh, I know that a number of you are caught up in the story with the, the um, trucking uh, protest, however you want to call it, the, the convoy that was going on for Canada. Uh, I know that we've, we've listened to, to all of the talk with, with it's Biden's first year, his State of the Union address. We've had COVID going on for two years now. We've had stuff about vaccination and mask and hand sanitizer for forever. And I realized something. I was just in my thoughts with myself. And... Uh, I realized that most of the world knew how I looked at current events. Uh, they probably wouldn't like me much. <laughs> I, there's, there's just a lot to be said for my attitude toward world events. It's, it's not that I'm, I'm unaware. It's not that I'm incompassionate or uncompassionate to the plight of others or, or the trauma that takes place. Uh, I, I feel for the people that are having to vacate their homes right now in the Ukraine and and the. the lives that it touches. I even see celebrities that, that you had no idea was from Ukraine, born there, raised there, whatnot. Um, even found out Steven Seagal is a best friend of Putin. Maybe not best friend, but they're buddies. They do uh, martial arts shows together when he goes to Russia. And, and so there's so many things you hear about right now. And don't worry, we're not going to talk about Steven Seagal beyond that. Uh, but I realize that my attitude for world events uh, I don't want to say I don't care. I do care. I mean, it, it, it's, it affects me. Uh, as I said, I, I, my heart feels for people that are losing their lives or their loved ones or their homes. But uh, I'm very careful with the way that I uh, allow these current events to draw me in. Uh, me and Kristen were talking about uh, the certain issues that sometimes I, I look at both sides of things. And and sometimes she goes, what? <laughs> and that's okay, because it's not that I'm ever really choosing a side of world events. It's that I like to be open-minded, uh, because I realize that there seems to always be an agenda somewhere that we're not being apprised of. There's always more to a story. There's always something else going on. And yet it can take one news broadcast. I don't care what the topic is. And all of a sudden, we're all up in arms. And it is a, uh, a world of misinformation. And that's what I want to talk about tonight. I want to talk about getting caught up in the world as Christians. And the warning that we have in Scripture uh, about doing just that. And, and I know this isn't entirely new. You all hear me talk about this. I throw in little, little blurbs in my sermons and all that. Uh, but... Uh, for, for emphasis sake, I want to explain before I get into our scripture tonight why this is such a passionate topic from your preacher to you. Uh, it, it is not a secret that I believe with all of my heart. I truly believe based off of my study of scripture that we can expect to see the Lord very, very soon. Very, very soon. And as some of you have heard me, if, I hope all of you have heard me to emphasize this, I know that before Jesus comes back, the world has to get even worse than it is today. Uh, I was talking with Dale Roberts today, and we were talking about uh, how quickly it seems evil is just taking a foothold around us. You'll say, oh, it can't get much worse than this, and the next day it's much worse than yesterday. And, and it's just amazing how well Satan is digging his teeth in, isn't it? So tonight we're going to talk about the warning of getting caught up in the world. And we're going to do it from a, from a very strong standpoint of what did Jesus say? 
Because when we as Christians are truly going to hold on to something of value, the very first, first source of information we need is Scripture, and even more importantly, Scripture out of the mouth of Christ himself. So we're going to have a lot of, of teaching of Jesus tonight. So let's get started. We're going to start in Luke chapter 4, verses 5 through 7. Luke 4, 5 through 7. And you'll understand very quickly why I chose this passage, I think. It says, Then the devil, taking him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, All this authority I will give you and their glory, for this has been delivered to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours." Now, in some regard, you might sit there and go, devil was offering something that wasn't his to give. But that's actually not the truth. Scripture actually shows that he is the master of this world in so many words. There's, he has a very strong influence. And he had the right to roam back and forth on the earth. We see in the book of Job. And, and so, so when the devil offers Jesus something, he's not offering something that Jesus can't validate. Notice Jesus doesn't come up in this conversation and said, that's not yours to give. He just says, you don't worship anybody but the Lord your God. But Jesus does not challenge the, the uh, authority of the offer from Satan because Satan's power is here. He is here working on the minds of us, humans non-angelic creatures, non-heavenly creatures, right? He is here to sway us, persuade us away from the path of Jesus Christ. So now go over to John 3, 16 and 19. Y'all should know John 3, 16, right? Everybody, even non-Christians can probably quote this some, but I want to see all of it, so pay, pay attention with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe in him is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. And this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Now this is a very really revealing statement when we think about the impact or the impact that the world has on current Christian and world events. All right? The fact of the matter is the world is full of people. Full of it. There's far more of this kind of person I'm about to describe than us. The Christian God-fearing Jesus-loving type. Those people that love the darkness and embrace it. The world is full of them. So when we get really caught up in an event and we start tying ourselves, uniting ourselves to these different groups or organizations and we have this common camaraderie, you need to remember that that group might be full. Might be, I'm not saying all of them, but it might be full of people that hate the light. They embrace the darkness. And when we get into camaraderie, right, that means they want us to embrace what they embrace and be united with them. So we better be very careful of who we unite ourselves with and what we unite ourselves against. This world of fast information, I mean, it's, it's disturbing how quickly people will believe something without any information about it. One news report, one, one, one story from a different perspective. I'm not just talking Ukraine. I mean any of them. How quickly we will believe the, the greatest amount of misinformation and then tie ourselves to other people feeling the same way. It's dangerous. If we go over to Matthew 18, 6 through 7. It says, but whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world because of offenses. For offenses must come, but woe to the man by whom the offenses comes. So here's this warning. Woe to the world, right? Because 
They seem to love being an offense to God today, don't they? They have no regard for the Father in heaven. They have no regard for the Son that sacrificed his life. They will happily do it on, on primetime television or all over the face of the internet, spit in the face of godliness, and then brag about it. Woe to the world for their offenses. Now these are the ones in Mark 4, 18, it says this, Mark 4, 18, 19. Now these are the ones sown among the thorns, you know, the, the parable of the sower, right? They are the ones who hear the word and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things entering in, choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. I want you to pay attention to what's going on out there. How many people have all of a sudden decided because the world has said this is who God should be, well, if that's who God is, I don't want any part of him. See? Once, once the world gets in there, the cares of the world, you should be passionate about this as a Christian. Why? The Bible doesn't tell me to. There's, there's a lot of things the Bible doesn't address that Christians have been convinced it's their job to fight for. Why? Because somebody who has based all their cares in worldly things has convinced Christians that they should base their cares there too. Even though it's not biblical. Even though it's not something God called us to fight against. So we better be very careful Mark 16, 15 and 16. You should know this because it's one of our, our baptism scriptures. But look what it says. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Now, even though this is one great for baptism, I want to emphasize this in a different direction tonight. I want you to realize that this is the command that Christ gave his disciples. This is it. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Baptize everyone. Now, I can't just hold them under there. they got to want it. But that's the thing. Our desire is to take the gospel of Jesus Christ into the world. And anyone that will believe it and receive it and accept Christ through the waters of baptism, that is the role of a Christian. So what about all these other bites that we keep fighting? tied up in politics or tied up in passion or tied up as a woman or tied up as a man or tied up as, as a white person or a black person or a Hispanic person or a Chinese. All these things that the world has, has told us we should be passionately fighting for. And yet, how many are biblical? So why are Christians putting out so much effort to fight something that when you really look at it, a lot of the times is worldly. It's a worldly fight that we got drawn into. So I want to talk now about the bluntness of truth. Y'all, if you haven't figured this out, this is a blunt lesson tonight because I don't want at the end of days, if this really is close to the end, I do not want any of us falling away because somebody convinced us to fight for something evil. That's why this is so, uh, y'all hear it on my heart a lot. I am so frustrated sometimes by the number of Christians in our congregation too, but in, across the globe that are passionately fighting for something that's not biblical. They've been dragged in and caught by, by Satan, the master of the world. So in, Here's the bluntness of the truth for Christians. John 7, verses 3 through 7. John 7, verses 3 through 7. We have a real interesting piece of text. We don't talk about it very often. But this is Jesus' own brothers and having a conversation with the Lord. Okay? His brothers therefore said to him, Depart from here and go into Judea, that your disciples also may see the works that you are doing. Now, this might sound like an encouraging statement, but it's actually not. It's almost antagonistic from his brothers. Uh, you'll see why in a second. It says, For no one does anything in secret while he himself seeks to be known openly. So their understanding of what their brother is doing is he's just doing this stuff for attention. 
So you need to go somewhere. Go hang out with your disciples. Help them because we know you're in this for the attention. But look what it says. It says, um, go back to this, verse 4. For no one does anything in secret while he himself seeks to be known openly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. See, if you want to be known, go show them to the world. Then Jesus said to them, my time is not yet come, but your time is already here. Is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me, because I testify it of it that its works are evil. Now, when you look at this, if you go on in this passage, and, and I encourage you to read it, have you read it in it a while? It says because they don't believe in him. Now we know some of his brothers will show up later in Scripture. James, being one of the more dominant one, who is obviously a convert to Christianity obviously realizes that his brother is the Messiah. Uh, but at this point, his brothers don't believe that he's the Messiah. They think it's just his older, their older brother trying to get attention. And notice what Jesus says, because it's really, they take a jab at them, at him, and he takes a jab back. He says, my time's not yet here, but yours is always ready. And then he ties them to worldliness. See, people of the world are always ready for action. People of the world can always stir up something. People of the world can always think of something to fight for. But for Jesus, he said, my time's not here yet. Well, that's a very good lesson for Christians to realize. This might not be your fight. Even though you feel passionate, even though somebody's plucked those strings inside of you trying to stir you up, you might need to take a step back and go, hey, wait, maybe this isn't my time. This isn't the fight I'm supposed to be fighting. Go down to John 12, 25, and it says, He who loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. See, so, so the tough lesson for us to realize is we better be careful how much we are looking for, for approval and how much we're looking to be happy. And don't get me wrong, we're allowed happiness, we're allowed joy, we're allowed peace. But we better make sure we're not only finding them through worldly things. Because we have to be willing to lose this earthly life, this worldly life, if we want to gain that eternal one in heaven. Go down to John 8, go back a few chapters, I should say, John 8, 21 to 23. It says, Then Jesus said to them again, I am going away, and you will seek me, and will die in your sin. Where I go, you cannot come. So the Jews said, Will he kill himself? Because he says, Where I go, you cannot come. And he said to them, You are from beneath, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. So Jesus makes a very, very strong separation that we better listen to as Christians. I don't want to be somebody that Jesus looks at on Judgment Day and says, Sean, you are from beneath. I'm from above. We have to realize that if we are truly God's people, we are not from beneath. We are from above. We have become spiritual beings fighting the spiritual fight for an eternal kingdom, not a worldly one. John 14, verses 15 to 17. Notice what Jesus says here. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him. For he dwells with you and will be in you. See, the, whom the world cannot receive, they don't get him. So many people out there have caution on this saying, oh, you're telling me I didn't feel the Holy Spirit? Oh, no, no. There's people out there the Spirit is pushing on. It doesn't make them Christian. It just means he's pushing them. And the question is whether they're going to feel that and move because of the urging of the Spirit. But there's others of us that have been baptized into Christ. And as Acts 2.38 says, right? Repent, be baptized, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. We don't have him pushing on us. We have him working through us to show us the path of God. But wor the world cannot receive the Holy Spirit. They don't get him. 
So here we have this differential uh, of treatment from God. You have a blessed gift that worldly people cannot have. So when he goes into there, then, then go back up here with me if you would. Uh, because it neither sees him nor knows him. See, they do not recognize the spirit. They think they do. Some people think they know all about spiritual things. But the fact is they're wrong. Scripture tells us they're wrong. But here it's encouraging for us because Jesus is telling his disciples, you want me to go because when I go, boy, the spirit shows up and you want the spirit. But that's not the end of this conversation. All right, we're going to get there in just a minute. We're going to come back to this a bit. We'll go to right now back a couple chapters again to John 12 this time. John 12, 46 to 48. He says, I have come as a light into the world, that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. And if anyone hears my words and does not believe, I do not judge him, for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. And I believe I shared this scripture a couple weeks ago in one of my sermons, but Again, look at the end of this, though. Verse 48. He who rejects me and does not receive my words has that which judges him. So Jesus says, I didn't come to judge you, but I did come to tell you what will judge you. So to ignore Jesus, to reject Jesus, to deny Jesus, uh, you've rejected yourself. You have denied yourself. When we get caught up in the wrong fights and, and in so doing, not rejecting Christ the way you think literally, but realizing everything that Jesus told his people to do, we reject that path and we adhere to worldly things. We are in dangerous territory. We have to be careful and make sure that we are, as Paul said, fighting the good fight. So it goes on in verse 40, He who rejects me and does not receive my words has that which judges him. The words that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. See? So if we're not paying attention, we're in trouble. Now let's go back. I told you uh, earlier we talked about Satan, the master of the world, right? This this power of, of worldliness that he has. Well, in the passage we just read in John 14, if you go down to verse 26, we get more of the... the uh, passage we just kind of had, but he says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. See, that's great news, right? But, don't you hate that word? But, go down four verses. And I want to give you the other thing Jesus says in this conversation. I will no longer talk much, verse 30, I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me. Got nothing to do with me. He's not part of this plan. So, so Jesus says on one hand, hey, Holy Spirit's coming. This is great because he can remind you everything I've talked, taught you over the time. You're going to be excited. It changes everything for you. This is a blessing. And he says, but the other guy's coming too. He is not part of me. He is not in the plan. But he is regarded as the ruler of this world. So Satan's power is here. He was put here for a purpose, right? So now go over to Luke chapter 12. How are we doing? We're good. Okay. Luke chapter 12, 29 to 31. It says, And do not seek what you should eat or what you should drink, nor have an anxious mind, for all these things the nations of the world seek after. And your Father knows that you need these things, but seek the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to you. Now, I want to warn you, and this is what a lot of this is about tonight. I want to warn you that even though this is talking about food, clothes, drink, right? That's what the world... This is a reality that we have to check, not just those three things, but how many other things does the world make a priority? How many things does the world say is important for us to act upon? Is it important for us to be passionate about? Is it important about enough for us to vote for or to pick it out on the street for or to, to rise up and fight wars over? How much is the world giving us a wrong message of what's important. I thought there was really something interesting uh, about uh, the after effect of the State of the Union. And, and I know 
that's kind of scary by some terms when I say it that way, but, but hear me out. There's, there was a comment made by President Biden, not a political statement, a Bible statement. Uh, he didn't make it, I'm making it. Uh, he said, we will not send troops into, uh, um, yeah, that country over there, just totally blank. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. It'll come back to me. Uh, we're not going to do it, he said, because there is a much bigger picture at play. That's a very honest statement. In other words, while everybody else is getting all worked up over what they are seeing in the media immediately, boom, 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 boom. He says, there's a lot of stuff you all don't even know about. That's what scares me. That's what concerns me. That's what should concern all of us. Because there's always something we don't know about. We are fed the information that most people want us to from the world. And the reality is we will get riled up so quick, so eager, before we even know anything. And we're ready to fight. We don't have that problem with Jesus. Right? We get these Bibles. I got a ton of them in my office. I got them in about seven different languages. I got them in about 30 different versions. I uh, don't like them all, but they're there. And But the story is still what we get to rely on. God has told his people, this is what I expect from you. It's when we deviate from that that we get ourselves into trouble. So here's a few scriptures for you. Ready? A few more, I should say. Uh, Luke 12... Uh, I'm sorry, Luke, uh, John 15, I just did Luke 12. John 15, 18 to 19. These are the reality statements as Jesus gives them to his people. That's us. I want everybody to pay attention to these. If you go back and write these. First in John 15, 18 to 19. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of this world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. If you are doing everything to please public opinion and everybody thinks you're a great person for standing up and fighting their fight with you, we got a problem. Jesus said, they hate you. He doesn't say they might hate you or someday they could hate you. He said, I called you out of the world. In other words, they will notice that you are not like them and therefore they will hate you because you will stand up for something different than they do. I know people don't like me when we talk po politics because I try not to have a world view. I have a Christian view. Do I want to pick up a rifle and go fight? No. Do I think it's terrible what's happening to people? Absolutely. I don't want anybody getting killed, with, especially if they're innocent little children. And I, so I'm not for that, but it, it's not my fight. People say, how can you say that? Well, no, that's worldly people saying that. God has not told me to fight. Not for that anyway. Next is John 18, 36. Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight. But, oh, so fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. See, how many times should we as Christians realize we are not fighting the fight we were called to? Right? Go into all the world. Teach the gospel to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That is what we fight for the right to do. That is what we have been commissioned as soldiers of the cross to do. And all this other stuff, so though we can be compassionate to it, though we can be opening to, to helping people in need and loving if they need that, that, that loving spirit and feeding them and clothing them and, and even giving them shelter. We can do all those things without getting drawn into a fight that we are not supposed to be fighting for. The last one is Philippians chapter 3, 18 to 21. Philippians 3, 18 to 21. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you, even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ 
whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. For our citizenship, everybody hear me? For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. I'm about to make some people angry, but bear with me. I am so delighted that the United States has become such a disgrace these days because I'm hoping it will encourage Christians to remember the fight that they're supposed to be involved in instead of all this other garbage going on. Patriotism. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I am very thankful to the Lord above that he let me be raised in this country. I truly am. Most of you know I'm a veteran. I went into the military willing to do my part. I have no regrets of that. I served the Lord every day I was in there. But the fact of the matter is, even that, I would probably rethink now that I have a little age and wisdom on my side. But the fact of the matter is, patriotism has caused so many of us to become, become passionate about worldly fights that Christians are not supposed to be tied up in. So I want to encourage you all, come be hated with me. Come be hated with Jesus. Take a stand against fighting the wrong fight. I'm not telling you to become political. I'm not telling you to become anti-political. I'm telling you to be Christian. Fight the fight we've been called to fight. Take the message of Jesus Christ into the world. If they hate you for it, remember, they hated me first. And they hated Jesus before me. And I'm okay with that. In fact, it brings me joy because everybody that hates me when I'm preaching, I figure I must be doing it right. So let's join together. This is our fight. This is what we should be passionate about. This is what we should be determined to make a difference in the world with. There will always be wars and rumors of war, Scripture tells us. Right? There's always going to be poverty. We can't get rid of it. There's always going to be homosexuality. There's always going to be abortion. There's always going to be hate. There's always going to be prejudice. There's always going to be evil. But it shouldn't be coming from God's people. That's my challenge tonight. Before you jump on that platform or that rally boat or whatever you want to call it, before you get so excited that you're writing hate letters to your representative or or getting on YouTube and making speeches of hate against a president or congresswoman or whatever, ask yourself, is this the fight God called me to fight? And before you say, I believe it is, find a scripture that tells you that. Make sure it is. Because we do not want to be tied to a world that we know hates God, has no part of Jesus Christ, and is led by the ruler of this world, Satan. I hope this encourages you. I hope it provokes you to thought. Even if you get mad at me, come talk to me about it. Don't badmouth me. Don't talk behind my back. I can take it. I'm a big boy. Literally, I'm a big boy. But we are God's nation fighting for a heavenly home and a godly people and the rest will let god worry about okay i love you guys here let's look at our prayer request i did hear or see where uh carolyn put something about lyle lyle got covid everybody uh pray for him i know he's so weak but he's also so tough i don't know how that man is as tough and looks as frail as he is but he's he's tough so pray for him, pray for Donna that they are, uh, get through this smoothly, I hope, and that God is watching over them. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, a lot of people chiming in today. I appreciate that. Glad to have everybody here. Uh, Gloria says she can't hear me. Was it just her? Okay, good. Uh, they're the only ones said it, so uh, Wi-Fi. 
Uh, let's see. Pray for Uncle David. He also tested for, that's from Kirsten, COVID. Uh, prayers for Christians. Um, there are a lot of Christians. There's Church of Christ missions groups uh, that are affected by everything going on. And that's why I said make sure that the fight we're in is the right fight. Uh, but do pray. Pray for all the things going on. It's, it's, it's a bad, bad world. So let's pray now. Dear God and Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this day that you've given us. And Father, for those of us that do live here in the USA, we are thankful that we were allowed to be brought up here, that we were allowed to be uh, raised with this uh, uh, advantage of freedom, of religion, where we really could worship you without threat or fear. We see a world that is changing that today, where it's getting uh, more and more uh, offensive to speak your name or to promote Jesus Christ. And Father, if that means the world hates us, let them hate us. Father, we just pray that you will stand by us, keep us strong in the fight that is here. Father, we pray that you will watch over those that are still sick. Of course, COVID is still around. Uh, worried about Lyle. We, he's been through a lot lately. Just really uh, ask that you bring some healing there. Uh, let him be a testimony of strength once again. Father, watch over us, guide us, forgive us of our sins, and help us to, to turn from the world and embrace the future that you have you have offered. Love you so much for Jesus, the life that he gave on the cross. We pray all this in his precious name. Amen. God bless. I love you guys. Uh, I hope you like this talk. It, it, it meant a lot to me to pass it on to you guys, and I wanted you to know why I'm so passionate about this lately. Uh, my concern is not for the world. My concern is for you. It's for me getting drawn into something evil when we shouldn't be. Uh, so we'll, let's fight together. God bless. We'll talk to you soon. Hopefully we'll see you Sunday.